What up, my man Stewie? Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, that's right. Hey, this is going to be an amazing episode. Tyler and Lizzie Goble. Uh, first off, Tyler is one of my favorite human beings. Amazing dude. So naturally, his wife, amazing dudette. And yeah. what are we? Uh, what are we going to talk about today, buddy? Yeah, you know, for for Tyler, he's a Marine, active duty, and his wife, they're uh, flipping houses in Waco, Texas, while still, you know, active duty military. And, uh, you know, they have an amazing cause. They're not just, you know, building businesses and flipping houses and making money to make money and, you know, become wealthy. They're doing it for an, an amazing cause, uh, fighting human trafficking uh, through a nonprofit organization, Unbound. Um, and we talk about that. We talk about running businesses. We talk about, uh, you know, how to set things up and then and like just diving in, making mistakes along the way. And, and like, it's an amazing conversation. Tons of value, very practical, a lot of actions that can be taken. Awesome episode. Let's get it. Go listen. You're listening to Filling the Storehouse Podcast. I'm David. And I'm Stuart. And we want to walk with you on the journey to living the abundant life through faith, family, and freedom. Our goal is to refine our why while helping you find yours. Together, achieve our best and highest purpose. In the end, we'll drive each other to intentionally fill our storehouse. All right. Tyler, Lindsay. Welcome to store filling the storehouse podcast, yeah. uh, Tyler. This is your uh, second time going with us. Um, you Glad were, you. Uh, yeah, you were. Uh, man, that, what that was like episode ten or thirty or something, something pretty early. So like episode I've been ten a faithful, or like fifty eight. I don't some, know, something like there. Faithful <laughs> listener of the storehouse podcast, and I think you guys were also my first time ever being on a podcast, and so this is fun, kind of coming full circle here. Yeah, man. Two years, two years ago, I think it was. This is awesome, wow. and, and and there's been yeah. uh, a lot of growth since then. I, I know, um, but uh, hey, so give us a little background, Tyler Lindsay. Um, where are you? What do you do uh, for our audience? Um, give us give us uh, all the details here. Yeah, you want me to go first, babe? Sure. Okay. Um, hey, so Tyler, I'm if you Tyler. don't mind, uh, sorry. When you say things like "babe," I totally think you're talking to me, so it makes it confusing. <laughs> So I was literally about to say, please keep the pet names down on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we're all like confused. I'm like, because I call Stu, <laughs> we're uh, all, uh, you know, sweet sweet cakes, and <laughs> so like, there's all these just really it, it could get really confusing. But anyways, oh, go ahead, Lindsay. yeah, I'll try, I'll try to keep those to to a minimum, but it's gonna slip in, I think, inevitably. But um, yeah, so I'm Tyler. I'm married to Lindsay. Um, I'm a follower of Christ, and I am active duty Marine Corps still, and so my kind of Marine Corps career, the way we we got to know each other, David, initially was through Navy football. So I went to the Naval Academy, graduated 2016, played football there, um, went into the Marine Corps, did the infantry thing for about four years. And then the last time I was on the podcast, that was the first semester I was at um, Naval Postgraduate School, which was my follow-on set of orders after doing the infantry thing in North Carolina for four years. And so from there, did two years and got a master's degree in operations research, which is like data science and analytics and like AI and machine learning and a bunch of really, really nerdy stuff. And uh, now I'm still active duty working in Marine Corps Recruiting Command in Quantico, Virginia as a uh, analyst. And so I'm doing a bunch of data analytics for essentially what is like the Marine Corps version of sales. So it's the sales department for the Marine Corps. And so that's been a lot of fun. Uh, um, but my wife and I, I'm sure we'll talk all about this. When we were out at Naval Postgrad, um, for people that don't know, it's in Monterey, California, which is where Pebble Beach is, right? And so there's kind of two trains of thought. There's people that they go to NPS, they get the degree, and they golf as much as humanly possible. And then there's people that pick up a hobby because they just came from like an infantry unit where you were working 18-hour days, and now you're like, what do I do with all this time? And so... Instead of learning how to golf, which I think would have been a pretty miserable failure because I'm left-handed, played baseball growing up, um, we launched a business. And so that was LTG Investments back in 2020 is when we kicked that thing off. And uh, we've been sprinting ever since. And so that's kind of my quick down and dirty. Hey, man, Phil Mickelson's left-handed. Just throwing that out that's there. That's true. He's not a bad golfer. But I'm surprised you even important. know that, David. Like, you know nothing about golf. Like, that's, that's Dude, impressive. I know. No, no, no. You see, you mistake things. There are things that I know a lot about that I'm just not very good at. Okay. And, and I would say that list is extensive. Yeah, yeah. Extensive. It's yeah. very large. That's not what we're talking about. We're, we want to we hear about you, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. 
I am Lindsay. Um, I am going back to school for my master's for architecture and design, um, which is not my background. My background is nutrition, randomly. Um, but when Tyler and I started the business is when I really got the uh, desire to design and get into real estate. And so I'm almost done with that. Um, but yeah, I work um, in the business just as the kind of project manager and designer and then um, going back to school and kind of take some side projects. So that's what I do. And I'm currently in DC. So we just moved to DC. Um, but yeah, that's a little about me. So Lindsay, tell, tell us a little bit about this business you guys uh, you know, give us some specifics because you guys are, you know, you, you mentioned, yeah, I started this thing, and blah, 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 <laughs> whatever, dude, you guys are killing it. You guys are doing amazing. Thank you. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about that business, please. Sure. So we started, I think, a little under two years. I don't know that we've hit our two year mark, um, but basically Tyler and I flipped um, a house that we lived in in North Carolina. We did like an in-home flip um, and we had a lot of fun. And we kind of saw that you can buy kind of a rundown, in this case, a hurricane damaged rundown house, um, and you can flip it and kind of make a profit. And so we just had a lot of fun doing it. And um, when we did make a little bit of profit, we decided to donate um, because we're Christians. And so we just like to tithe 10% of everything that we make. Um, And so we decided, let's tithe to, um, we'll get into this later, but my mom's anti-human trafficking nonprofit, um, which is called Unbound. And so um, we just kind of saw the fruit from that. And we saw the return of just giving to a worthy cause. And so we're like, let's do this as a not full-time because we have other jobs, but kind of a side gig. And so we just went like full throttle. And um, since then, I think we've done 18, if I'm not mistaken. So we just put the pedal to the metal and started flipping single family houses and um, just tried to grow our business. Um, we don't live in Texas, so it's been you know challenging, but fun. Um, all of our business is in Texas. Um, and we just uh, continue to flip houses and give back to unbound. So that's a little bit about our kind of business model. And real quick, sorry, just for further context, when you were in Monterey, uh, what what were you, what were you doing then from a professional standpoint? What was I doing? seems like a lifetime ago. You were, you were cleaning an Airbnb, babe. You remember that? Yeah. It was kind of, I was was crazy. Yeah. I started school in Monterey, but for the first year, we had just moved. And so I didn't work. And I, um, that's when I kind of started, I'm like, what am I going to do? I guess I'll kind of work for the business. And I think I like design. So I actually did help this lady with her Airbnb and now we have our own Airbnb. So that was a great experience. Um, but I wasn't really, I didn't have a big career. And then, so I was just kind of working on the side with this lady. And then later down the road, we were there for two years. So for the last year, I decided I'm going to go back to school and I'll be full-time in the business. So yeah, and I, what, and I what's the really, point I wanted to make with that is is I love. Sorry, Tyler, go ahead. I was I was gonna say, hopefully, um, your dad doesn't crucify me and your mom doesn't crucify me for this statement. But when I was asking her dad to, to marry Lindsay, we we were actually at the Iron Rooster, which is an Annapolis classic, right? Amazing. You ever place. been to Annapolis? You've been to the Iron Rooster. You've gotten those pop tarts. Um, and when we were talking, he's like, "Now, Tyler, I hope you understand. Like, Lindsay just she wants to be a mom, and there ain't nothing wrong with wanting to just be a mom. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's a a full-time job for sure in and of itself but he's like she's probably not gonna work like just understand like she's not gonna she's not doesn't ever had like a huge aspiration to have a huge career um are you okay with that and i was like yeah sure like i'm a huge nerd i was like my spreadsheet always was like based on my <laughs> income like there's never like a, a column for my wife to have an income was that was kind of always my game plan and before we know it she's working way more hours i think in this design stuff and doing like freelance work for other folks, um, designing her own flips. She's flying back and forth across the country to look at all these houses and do these things. And she's working way more than a typical job right now. Um, but it has been super, super fun because I think once you, when you see your spouse do something that one, they're super talented at, but two, they really enjoy. Like that's one of the most fun things in the world for me is seeing, seeing her just absolutely crush it. Um, doing something that she enjoys doing and um, maybe I'm speaking out of turn babe but it doesn't feel like we're really working because we're getting to do something we love with people we love so it, it does. I don't know <laughs> it feels no, like that's work. awesome and, and I and I think um you know one thing I wanted to highlight that just 
kind of popped to mind as you guys were talking about this path is, is I love how you took action and you found passion in that, right? Like there, you had passions or things that you, you know, the data stuff and all the, the nerdery and all that stuff that you pursued, but, but you, you were able to take action and you're doing things. And it's so cool to see that, you know, as you, as you've, as you did those things, now you, you want to go to school and pursue this. I feel people get so stuck in, the this analysis this constant analysis well what if should i what if and they never get anywhere like Stu and i have made so many mistakes with the businesses we've started tons of mistakes but every single one of those mistakes projects us forward right it, it, it's like okay well i learned from that and we're bad if we do it again but now we know what not to do so let's let's continue to grow and, and i love that you guys figured that out really early and that's rad because now you're pursuing kind of some people would argue it's backwards right you're getting education something you're passionate well i think that's a perfect i think that's a perfect path it's awesome so yeah you know, what's really funny is when she when she started that degree the same day she was like starting the program we were using stuff she was already learning inside that program on these flips was that what you're about to say babe like cutting yeah. you off no, I was just going to say, I think we did make the decision up front. Like, let's just jump in and let's do it a hundred percent because why not? And I always said like, same thing with Tyler. I said, you know, I want to be a stay at home mom and I will never go back to school. I hated school. I wasn't passionate about it. Um, no, I'm not doing it. But when you find something that you're passionate about or that you want to be good at and do something well, you do just jump in fully. And so even though I said, I will never go back to school, I'm like, I need to be educated and I want to be the best I can be at the business. So that requires, you know, some hard work. So yeah, you just have to make a decision. If you're going to do something, let's do it hundred percent. Well, that's why so. Stu's not back in school. Cause you, one of the <laughs> things you said is be really good at something. And then you go, you know, go back to school, pursue it. So Stu's been out of school for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't like going to school either. I didn't uh, either. But, but, to- but I think what you're, what you're saying about people being afraid to do stuff is like, they're afraid that, people are going to see what they're doing and it's just not that good, but kind of flipping that on its head. Like we're like Lindsay's now because she took that action is getting hit up by people to do consulting work for design, like design my entire house or design this whole thing. And, and on the flip side, like I've with my, my data stuff, it's like, you can get wrapped up. Um, I guess kind of backpedaling a little bit. Like I do a lot of data analytics. Like we use it in our, um, in our business to kind of look at the model or look at the, the market that we're in. And I think it's, I think it's super interesting. And I've, and I've started doing consulting for data. So I've started doing like for folks to, um, to look at their markets or kind of just provide more education on like what the landscape is. And I know as the recording of this is like the feds just been beating the crap out of um, single family home investors, right? Like our buyer pools are getting cut in half. And I think people are really nervous. Um, but my, my philosophy on that kind of stuff is you can't let, I think this is like a cliche saying, but you can't let, um, perfect be the enemy of good, right? Like if you just start doing stuff, like, first of all, most people probably don't even see what you're doing anyways. (laughs) Like, so you put one thing out there, nobody's going to look at it anyways, because they don't know you exist, but consistent action over time like that, I think is what lets you break the breakthrough and, and kind of cut through the, the lower and stuff and and your skill set will build as you take more action like the first flip we did um it was not perfect at all but after we've kind of progressed and we've gotten better at our numbers and whatnot and like those flips they get you get better at something the more you do it but you never get good at it if you don't ever just start and i think a lot of people get hung up on like i've got to have the exact everything dialed in um before I take action on something, it's like, well, no, if you've got about 50% of where you think you need to go, just start doing something. And then um, me and Lindsay, we're, we're big believers in that God just smooths out the bumps as you go. Um, as long as you're kind of including good counsel and wisdom in it. But yeah, That's great, man. Yeah. David and I have both been uh, private lenders for you guys and our fund um, as well. And, and uh, I, Lindsay, I, I showed uh, my, my bride, one of, uh, you know, all the, the after rehab photos of, of one of the houses that, that we were lenders on. And she was like, mm. this is amazing. She, <laughs> she loved it. So, so kudos to you. You, you are doing a, an amazing job. Thank but you. I'm curious, you know, uh, for the, for the both of you. So you guys have been, you were in Monterey and now you're in DC uh, you're and you're flipping these houses in Waco, Texas, um, and uh, you you're both 
you know, you're, you're married, you're, you're working on the business together. You know, David and I joke a lot about, you know, he being my work wife, I being his work wife, et cetera. And, you know, we have, we're different. Uh, we have differences of, of opinions. How does that work out for you guys uh, being husband and wife, you know, living at home uh, and, and, and working together in the business? Are there, you know, how do you guys work that out? Do you guys have specific roles? Did you define those roles and you're doing this, you're doing that. And I mean, you guys just talk about work all, all day long, all night long. Like, yeah. I'm curious we definitely how that works. Have to- we definitely have to turn it off and be like, okay, you know what? Let's go to dinner. We're not going to talk about business because um, you could do it all day long, all night long. But um, we really do have our separate roles. Like the things that Tyler is good at, don't even look at me. Don't even ask me to do that. The things <laughs> that you know I'm good at, Tyler's like, I don't know what you know what color looks good, what looks bad. So it, it's a great partnership because I think we have our strengths. Um, and uh, the same with my dad. We brought my dad in full time. Um, kind of the boots on the ground in Waco, Texas. And he's the same way. Like the things that he's good at are the things that he loves to do and the things that he doesn't love to do. He's like, thank goodness for Tyler. So um, yeah, I think we just have our separate roles and try to not to say there's it's smooth sailing hundred percent of the time, but we just are thankful to have our expertise and just kind of stay in our lanes. So did you yeah. guys kind of write those out like ahead of time when you kind of were starting the business? Did you say like, all right, here's going to be my roles. Here's going to be your roles. Here's what we still need. Let's go find somebody to do that. Or are you, are you just kind of like figuring it out as you go? I wish we were a little more formal, but that's also my personality, right? It's yeah. like, I'm the numbers guy. I'm the guy. Dude. I know. I probably, <laughs> I, I think I probably built one somewhere. It's my computer somewhere, but yeah. um as far as like really clearly defining it, like, I know that's something that like, I'm a bit of a control freak by nature. And so I'm like, feel myself having to get checked sometimes where I'm like, why do I care? I don't, I don't need to worry about that, especially early on. It's like, I don't need to worry about, did this get ordered? Like Lindsay's got it. Like, I don't need to check on that. Like she has it um, and stuff like that. And even when it comes to like hiring folks, like we brought on a full-time assistant and a full-time bookkeeper and by doing that, that's just like when Lindsay was saying she thought she was organized before like we got married or something. Like I thought I was organized in the business until we brought on like additional folks in there. And so I think the learning curve um, never ends, but defining the roles I think is easy, the smaller you are because they're just kind of natural. But as you, as you're growing, I think that's where, I think that's, I don't know what you, what you think Lindsay, but that has been a, I don't want to say pain point, but like a really big learning curve for me is like, okay, all this stuff that lives in my head needs to get put down somewhere or else I'm the one who's going to always have to do it. And so, um, I don't know what do you think wins. Yeah. Yeah. I think you learn as you go. Like we, um, we saw, there's a lot of things that I'm doing that easily I could hand off to somebody else. So it's like, then we saw the need, let's bring in a full-time assistant or like Tyler doesn't need to spend 40 hours a week doing the accounting. Let's bring in an accounting person. So you really learn as you go, like who else do I need to bring in or do I need to assign duties to somebody else? So maybe we should have been more organized, but this is a learn as you go process. Yeah. But I think that, and I think that's huge, right? And and you, you're learning that. And, and I think there's a couple of things that really hit home. One uh, it, it's extremely liberating to know your role, define it, and then operate in that, right? And and to yeah, you know, there's this element of control and and whatnot. But I think when we really get down to it, to liberate ourselves from those burdens is it actually frees up capacity. It helps us to more fully embrace and and excel in what it is that we were not only created to do, but our role in the team. And then if you're, if you guys have defined that, which you effectively have, and, and you're moving forward every, you know, each of you is moving forward in that role, your business is going to thrive mm-hmm. because you're, you're kind of getting out of, and Stu and I, you know, this is not natural, right? This is not an easy, yeah, you're married. And sometimes that's harder, right? Like Stu and I being professionally married, uh, that, that it doesn't make it easier. Like just because we know what each other are thinking that, that has a, that has a downside to it because now I'm making assumptions Mm -hmm. of what he's thinking. I'm potentially having expectations that I think he knows what I'm thinking. So now those expectations are being unmet. That's no different in your marriage or your relationship with your dad, right? Because we're all, we're all such complex beings. So I I applaud you not only in doing that, but I also, for our listeners, that is time well spent. 
and and it's not time well spent to alleviate frustration. That is a big benefit, but it's time well spent to make more money in a business, mm-hmm. right? So that we're all doing our money making activities. We're all living in that, and then we can you know effectively perform at a very high level, which you guys you guys are doing, which is incredible. Because you know, and I, I think it was lost in you know in brevity earlier, but you guys effectively are averaging like nine flips a year as a brand new business. Mm-hmm. That's crazy and amazing. Yeah. And you're just getting better, right? And and and, and I also don't want it to be lost. There are going to be a lot of people in this period of history, at economic downturn. And if we go into recession, there are going to be a lot of millionaires that are made in this period. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. you know, when the buyers list get cut in half and we start panicking and I'm going to stop buying, I'm going to stop doing this, there are going to be a lot of people that are taking action that are going to come out of this you know, in a phenomenal way. And then the rates come down. If the numbers work now, when the rates come down, you refine it. Like it just, all these things are, you know, uh, so, so we shouldn't despair, right? You keep, you keep, keep pressing and be smart about it, but I love it. I love it. Something something I think about a lot is like, how blessed are we that we got to start this business when it was really, really hard to find a deal. It was really hard to find a deal. And so we were, we spent about six months when we got this thing off the ground of let's just telling folks, Hey, we're buying real estate. How many of you bought? We ain't bought nothing, but we're, we're trying to find something. And it was like very disheartening for, for six months. I mean, I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Lindsay probably thought I was absolutely insane. Um, at times where I'm like trying to find something, just trying to get a foothold somewhere. And so for that, that whole period for us, when the market was just red hot in the single family world, figuring out how to get a deal was a, a really awesome skill set to be able to develop. Now we're on the back end of that thing. Now we've got some deals. Now we got to figure out how we're going to sell these things. And so I, I think it's, it's funny how the world works sometimes, but I feel really blessed that we're able to go through these difficulties now when we're young and when the business is young, because you see the success stories of, of these different people that have biographies written on them and, and they always talk about how they got their nose bloodied in some certain way. Um, and so I think we're, I feel very blessed, but also it's stretched my faith exponentially to deal with the, the really, it's, it's, it's difficult, right? When you're struggling really, really hard for something that you really, really want. Um, I think God uses those times in our lives to really be like, okay, like now you have to trust me through this. And so far there hasn't been a single time that, I've been like losing sleep at night over something. And then God hasn't answered that prayer in some way, shape or form. And everything's been fine. And if if we're being completely honest, like that's, that's us right now. You know, it's like, we've got four houses on the market that we would really love to sell. (laughs) And so it's like not a great time to be flipping houses on the back end of your flips. Um, Great time to be buying houses, really good time to be buying houses in my opinion for investors. Um, but the back end of a flip is is not as lucrative as it has been. But um, I say all that, I feel like it kind of rambled there, but I just think when you, when you look at the grand scheme of things, so beneficial to go through hard times because you just learn so many skills that you just wouldn't, you wouldn't be forced to learn those things unless you struggled really hard for something that you really want. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And the thing is, it's never going to be, perfect yep. it's never going to be easy like there's something everybody would be doing it if it was easy right mm-hmm. yeah. all of it and 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 i want to get into to unbound and then the future you know giving outbound uh, uh campaigns yeah. but 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 to put to that you know things that and back to kind of the roles but also the core values faith whatever it is that drives you you know for us everybody on this call faith is 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 the foundation of what we yep. do, but giving 10%, especially when maybe your earnings aren't as high, like that's hard too, right? Or giving yep. more than 10%, living a life of faith of, to tithing and giving and, and, and these, these different things. So I'm curious, what is, t- talk to us a little bit about the giving element to your businesses. Cause it's such a huge part of it. Why you do business. I, I don't think if there wasn't a giving component, I don't even know if you would do business, but mm-hmm. But talk to us a little bit about that, Lindsay, and and then let's get specific into what you guys are giving to because it's pretty it's pretty stinking rad. 
<laughs> yeah, I think when we started, the reason why we kind of uh, like shifted our business into being such a like uh, having a big giving aspect, like incorporating that into the core value of our business, I think is simply because that, like I said, that first flip we did, we just saw, I can't even remember how much we donated, but my mom came back to us and was like, that small amount of money that you donated makes the biggest difference in the world. And so that's kind of what um, led us to have that element as part of our business. But now I think, you know, two years in, I think it's such a core value of our business because as I've learned, it's hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's sacrifice. It's early mornings, late nights, but having that driving force behind you is what makes all the difference. So like you said, if we didn't have that as a part of our business, I think, you know, we would have given up because it's hard and it's, it's a lot of sacrifice, but you have something that you're working towards. You know that your hard work is going to pay off for somebody's life in such an invaluable way. Like the ways that we've just the amounts of money, like it's not anything crazy, but I know from firsthand experience that it changes, you know, a young girl's life. It buys her a bus ticket, it buys her a bed, it buys her food, it buys, you know, it changes somebody's life. And so just having something behind your business that can motivate you besides, you know, I don't know what other motivation there is money or status that fades, but um, yeah, we just put something behind our business that really keeps us going. Yeah. And, and I think too, money's never enough. Like you never get to that bottom of that pit where you're like, man, I flipped 50 houses this year and I made $10 million and now I'm satisfied. It's like that, that never is going to be enough. And like, we set some pretty lofty goals. We thought at the beginning of our business and we hit those in a year and we're, there were three-year goals. And guess what? At the end of those, when we hit those goals, it was like, Oh, cool. do more. like we got it. Yeah. yeah. We need, we need more. Like we should have had bigger the goals. Balance sheet's not big enough. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, but I'll tell you what the, the giving part of it. And even like going beyond that, I think, kind of reframing what giving really is like, I think hiring people is like giving mm -hmm. because you're providing a true great place for people to work and people to be respected and provide for their families too. And so not only is, is making money important for the business because we want to be able to give it charitably, but we want to be able to be generous with salaries. We want to be able to be generous with giving bonuses to contractors that do a phenomenal job. Um, we want to be able to give Christmas presents to folks. Um, and the money that we've made, I've been way more excited about the, the giving and like the bonuses than I did about, like, we really haven't spent any of our own money. <laughs> like, you know, we, got, we got about a year and a half in and we truly were like, we were just, you know, working and had our heads in the ground. We're like, I don't think we bought anything. Like it just really, it, you change your perspective from, I just want to make as much money as I can to, I want to make money to give to mm. people or to an organization. It really like that mind shift is, is huge. And I think it'll take you further than you think. Do you guys need Stu and my address for uh Christmas <laughs> gifts? Like if yes. you want to, okay, cool. We'll, we'll send yeah, that to you after the show. We'll right. it up. It'll be in the show notes for anybody who wants to send Christmas presents. To us. <laughs> so I'll, I'll challenge you both because David and I were, had a very, very similar mindset for a long, long time. Um, and I'll challenge you to that. You should pay yourselves like yeah. something, yeah. right? Well, like yeah. you, sh you should. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, so, so, you know, when you guys started you know, thinking through this, like thinking about how you're going to give to unbound, you know, hiring people, giving Christmas presents, bonuses, all that kind of stuff. You know, what, what did that look like, you know, on, on paper and through your conversations, was it just like, Hey, we're going to give 10% to unbound every single time we flip a house and make a profit. Um, you know, how did you go through that, um, you know, communicating between the two of you as you're starting your business? Well, when I think we're really intentional about setting that minimum floor of 10% with Unbound, because I think, and I'm really grateful. Um, I was raised by some awesome people. Lindsay was raised by some awesome people. We got great parents. Um, and I really wanted to safeguard us from like that monster of more of being like, setting setting bottom line numbers because it, it was just going to be empty at the end of the day and so we set that baseline at 10 percent, but we really wanted to also understand it's like 10 percent's the minimum like we've got to do that but 
when God blessed us with multiple deals, like I think your deal in particular, Stu, the tithe off of that one, that was right when Rus- Russia kicked off um, the war in Ukraine. And so Unbound actually was sending teams to the Poland border and they were helping people that were super, super high risk for being trafficked. Um, Cause that's like the target indicator. Number one, right? Like you've got people that have no, no place to live. They've got no food and they're just hoping somebody's going to give them a ride somewhere. And so Unbound had teams on the ground in Poland. They actually stood up an international office. Um, but the timing of your, your house, like conservative underwriting, like, we weren't using future comps and we rode that wave of appreciation and we made like far really four times as much money as we thought we were going to make on that one. And so through the, through the making of that one, we were able to help be a match, pretty significant match for what helps stand up that, that branch. Um, and it's funny how, again, God works with timing, but it was like in the world of, of nonprofits, it's super great when people donate, like it's, it's awesome. Like, I know you guys know that, but it's also really stressful sometimes if somebody donates and they're like, Hey, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars and I'm going to match it if you can raise it in the next month. And so it turns kind of into like a capital raise for real estate. Right. And so it's like, they got, they, that happened to them. They gave us a phone call and we're like, Hey, just so you know, I I know you guys are giving regularly out of whatever, um, but we just got this. It's like, well, that's that's funny because we were closing on Friday and we're going to make four times as much money as we thought we were going to make on this one. And so awesome. that one enabled us to to be a lot more generous. Um, but as far as like codifying it, we always wanted to use 10 percent as that as that minimum, but also be creative in ways that we're giving beyond just money um, and kind of building relationships. And And babe, I think you should talk about the the foster home that you designed and and basically we we donated some money to the foster home but a large majority of that donation was Lindsay's time and effort and flying out to Waco and and getting things done and Lindsay if you don't mind um when you talk about that if you could just give us a a little bit of background to what Unbound is please yeah please um yeah so I was able to help design um a foster home for kids for Unbound so Unbound um is a multinational anti-trafficking um organization started by my mom so it started in Waco Texas um and they just work on all sorts of things they work on prevention training um oh gosh I'm gonna butcher this I can't remember their words (laughs) they just they do incredible advocacy yes they work with uh, law enforcement teachers everything they're really just a to z working um, either with victims or preventing human trafficking um so in waco texas someone um, from motex is a construction company he donated a house to unbound and said if you guys have a need for this house here it is and so it's a um it's actually opening very very soon i think it's opening in a few weeks Um, But it's a foster home for um, girls that have been trafficked um, and it's a short term housing uh, facility. But yeah, he just um, asked me, I was in Waco one day and he's like, you want to design this thing for me? Because, you know, I'll I'll put white walls and white subway tile. But if you want to do something fun, then go for it. So, yeah, that was amazing. I mean, it's we weren't pouring our money, but I was it's what I love to do. And I took, you know, kind of my talents and my desire to design and gave to unbound that way. And so, yeah, we found cool ways, even just besides money to give back. Um, So that was really fun also to design a beautiful and comfortable place for people that, you know, are coming from horrible situations. They thought they were going to a nice foster family and, you know, kind of found themselves maybe not within the family, but in some situation found themselves being trafficked. And so, you know, they have a lot of trauma, but to give them this beautiful space that they can heal was also another amazing thing that we were able to be a part of. Yeah. I think sometimes we, we, uh, undervalue and Stu and I have actually made a kind of a big change recently, um, in that, you know, giving money is great and and we are huge believers in giving and, and, uh, you know, and being faithful in, in what God has blessed us with being good stewards, but, but he also get, he, he gave us these, right. Mm-hmm. He, he made us good steward. He gave us this, he gave us a heart. He gave some of us, uh, you know, like Tyler just popping out of his uniform and muscles and, <laughs> and he gave us these different things 
And so like Stu and I we went and did a, we're, we're helping with a bit volunteer and a build for uh, the veterans community project, another organization we love. And they were side by side with uh habitat for humanity. And, and we were hammering nails all day. Mm-hmm. And that was, I would say that was more rewarding than giving money. Money to me is very faith driven. I, and I drive great pleasure in, in giving, but it's like, you know, it's, it's almost, sometimes it's so automatic. It's kind it's of the easy button. Yeah. Brain. It's easy, it right? Easy you get up and you brush your teeth. It's like brushing your teeth. If it's just part of who you are, it's part of who you are. But to go and, and see people and, and to see these girls and to build something that's going to bless them so deeply um, is such an amazing thing. Like it's so cool. It's so enduring and it's so rewarding to, to be able to put your hands on, you know, Stu and I talk about this with, you know, we're giving to people, but, but how about we go give them a hug? Mm-hmm. Because that, that's something that is, is just so different too. And I'm a hugger. Stu's not as much of a hugger, but I'm a hugger. So I, I, I enjoy it. But but it's, you know, I love that point that you make, Lindsay, that because a lot of us, I think it, it gets lost on us, right? We get mm-hmm. we get lost and and we have so many things to offer that when we don't give those things, it's it's a disservice to whether it's your church, your, you know, your group, your friends, whatever it is. And so to be very conscious and intentional about that, I think is a is an is a amazing place to be. And something else, I think too, it's like I would love to see more people build skills like business skills. But then you can always help people figure it out. You know, it's like even buying one house could be life changing for people, you know. And so like by doing what you guys have done with Storehouse and understanding how to do these like technical things that get people hung up. If you can just be that person that they talk to and they're like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. This is a bad idea. And you can give them positive affirmation or you can kind of show them like, hey, don't do this, do this. Those small little tweaks like can change the trajectory of people's lives. You know, and so I think that's another thing that goes overlooked is like being generous with your time with people that just need help, not even necessarily like a, it's a charity. It's just folks that because you've spent so much time building a business, you can give them the easy button to to go all, go and start either their own business or, or something else, too. And um, that's been something really rewarding, too, that I always go back and fall back on when when times are tough. It's like. I journal most days um, and it's really, really fun to go back in time and see the things you were praying about and seeing how they got answered. Um, But then also whenever you're feeling down, it's good to like almost like reverse count your blessings, be like, how many like events have I been able to either speak at or talk to people or just relationships have I built that probably the struggle I'm going through right now was worth just one of those things. But, but God has blessed us with the ability to get to talk to a multitude of people at this point and get to help a multitude of people, not just monetarily or, or through a nonprofit, but just by um, being someone that can get questions answered from, I guess, if that makes sense. Not that we're experts by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like, you don't need to be an expert to go from zero to one. So. Yeah, no, it's huge, man. I, I agree hundred um, percent. Let's, let's talk about the issue of human trafficking because you know, it, it is a, big deal. And I think it's a bigger deal than what most people think and realize. And and I know it, it happens everywhere. And for, for the longest time, I, I didn't think it happened in the United States, like mm-hmm. ever, you know, you, you hear of most uh, nonprofit organizations that are kind of in this space, they're working overseas, you know, maybe in Asia or South America or, or, you know, Eastern Europe. Um, but, but I know unbound, you know, when we talk to your mom, Lindsay, you know, they were focused on Waco, Texas, you know, they were focused in Dallas, Texas, they were focused in the United States a lot. And they're focused in other places as well. Like, you know, Tyler, you was talking about Poland, Ukraine. And, um, but what I thought was really cool was, you know, your mom was talking to the sheriff in Waco, Texas, and, you know, you guys are building out a, a, a foster home there as well. Let's talk about stuff that's happening here in the United States. Like it's a, it's a problem more than people think, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And unfortunately with, advanced technology and people on their phones and getting younger and younger on their phones, it's only growing because, you know, their trafficking has shifted from overseas or from people, you know, 
shoving you in a white van. It's shifted to, it's on your phone. It's somebody messaging you and DMing you and, you know, coercing you, becoming your friend and becoming, you know, your boyfriend, you should come over. That's what trafficking has turned into. And so because of growing technology, it's only growing, unfortunately. Um, so that's everywhere. Anyone who has a phone, you're, you know, it doesn't have to be overseas. It's in the United States. It's in Waco. It's in Dallas everywhere in your hometown, even if you don't think it is, it is. And so, um, yeah, if it makes you feel better. My mom, I'm sure she told you this. She thought that it was an overseas problem, even herself. And then she started doing the research and said, oh my gosh, it's, it's here in Waco. It's in my backyard. Um, and so that's kind of why they shifted and they started in Waco. Um, so yeah, it's, it's terrible. I think a big thing that Unbound focuses on is prevention and awareness and education because, you know, so many people, they still think it's overseas and it won't happen to me, it won't happen to my daughter, but um, they just switch their tactics. And it's, it's very easy to get contacted by someone online and it's very easy to get coerced and um, talked into things. And so it's definitely here in the United States and it's everywhere. And I think you make a great point with, um, you know, when you, when you talk about anybody with a phone and, and what's interesting, and I'm not trying to, this is not to be scary and boogeyman ish at all, but we oftentimes, and I've seen this a lot, um, actually to a concerning level amongst some, some friends, just the complete hands-off nature of letting your kids be on devices. Yeah. And, and so we, you know, I've started talking to my kids about, cause there, I, there's actually, this just happened two days ago. My son came up and and he's been playing this jet game, just a jet game uh, for, for months. And he said, Oh, this is how we can, he's like showing me his ranking and he's all proud, whatever. Um, but he said, Oh, we have to send, here's my partner. And I was like, your partner, what do you mean your partner? And he goes, well, we have like a wingman. And I'm like, just show, walk me through this. And, and he shows me, and there's like, from all over the world, you know, there was a flag pop up and, and I said, are you chatting with, are, th are these people talking to you? He's like, no, you have to send them a thing um, to join the game. Like, cause your partners. And I was like, interesting, but did they ever talk to you? You know, I'm just talking to him. Right. And he's <laughs> for him. He's like, he's a, he's a knucklehead, but, but he's, you know, technologically savvy, but he, but we're just starting to talk through it. And, and my mind immediately goes to, man, it's so easy. It's so easy. And I think parents don't realize it. And when they just unlock it, ah, uh, they're just on there. They're just doing screen time. When you just unlock it and you're so like, just laissez fair about it. It, it is a big, big problem. And predators, they're not good people. Mm -hmm. Like they're just not good people. They're not benign. And, and it's, and it is a it is a significant issue. And so I, I really appreciate you highlighting that because, um, you know, it, to, to not parent today has such far reaching Im implications, right? It's, it's not like it used to be for us to not parent is opening the door to potentially opening the door to a lot of things. And Stu and I are not fear mongers. We, we, we you know, I tell my kids to get out of the house and go play. And yeah, if you want to go walk a mile, go walk a mile. But the other side of that is let's not be ignorant about it. Right. It's very yeah. easy to turn on the blinders and be like, not in America, not in the United States. We don't yeah. do that. No, we do. And especially you think about someone that anybody can be contacted. I can be contacted tomorrow from somebody, but then you take somebody that's, you know, they don't have parents in the picture or they really struggle with self-esteem or they really want a boyfriend or, you know, they were abandoned and they have a need to fill. You take someone like that and then somebody contacts them, then they are like, oh, oh my goodness, this guy's telling me I'm pretty, or this person wants to hang out with me, or the girl that I met in the police station who had been trafficked, she was answering a modeling call. You know, she was like, oh my goodness, someone's telling me I'm beautiful and I can model. So anybody can be contacted, but then you take people that have some, you know, kind of underlying factors that are, they're trying to fill a need, then they're even more, you know, susceptible to human trafficking. So yeah, I think every parent, should be aware every person and um yeah it's uh it scares me something fierce i mean I, you know davis says we're not trying to be fear mongers but you know i have a seven-year-old about to be eight-year-old little girl and you know she asks for our phone sometimes to watch you know like youtube like christian song youtube videos and i'm like i don't want <laughs> to give you my phone maybe i'll just let you watch one 
show, but, uh, yeah. it, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting for sure. It's, it's a crazy world we're living. Um, so how do we, how do we get the message out? You know, I, you know, you guys, you've been so, on some podcasts now and you're spreading the message of, of, you know, what Unbound is doing. How do we continue to, uh, to tell people, you know, this, this message that, that we're, that we're not hearing. Yeah. I mean, they have, they have a couple different pushes throughout the year for stuff that they do. Um, one of them, that kind of just comes to mind is they do like a light of the dark 5k every year um, in Waco, which is always a really good time. Um, they've got an awesome relationship with the city of Waco. And so they'll like do the whole glow stick thing and do a 5k. And um, my brother-in-law, I think, did he win last year? Lens did Matt end up beating the kids? Oh yeah, he did. He won the 5k. Okay. The year before though, he actually got cut off or something and uh, went the wrong way. Was that what happened? And he lost to some kids. Yeah, he was mad. So he came back year two and he won. <laughs> they beat him. Yeah. But um, so that's a that's a big way. Um, their website is just unboundnow.org. Um, and they've got a ton of really, really good re- resources. Um, you can always reach out to Lindsay and myself or really you guys, too, because you guys are pretty well tied in um, or unbound directly. They've got their contact information on the um, on the website. But it's just a lot of it. It's just being, like you said, David, being very actively involved in lives of not just your kids, but the people around you, right? It's like when we lived, that's a, that's a difference between living in D.C. right now and living in Monterey, California, where we were for two years. Um, we knew all our neighbors in Monterey. In D.C., it's like, don't say hi to me. <laughs> it's like, I don't know who my neighbors are. Like, I say hi to somebody in the elevator heading up for our unit, and it's like, you're, you got five eyes coming out of your head. Like, like, what are you doing saying hello to me? Like, good morning. Oh my gosh. Like, like, what are you doing? And so I think there's a, there's a really strong need. And I think you guys are helping fill that need with the storehouse mastermind is like, there's a need for community and for people to really know the people around them. And I think even that, that would go a long ways, just knowing your neighbors and knowing people around you. So, you know, if something weird is going on, like if you don't know, know somebody, you don't know if there's something that's off baseline for those folks. Yeah, I love it, man. Well, how, how do people get in touch with you? How do people uh, learn more about Tyler and all the data, you know, analytics and nerdy stuff you're doing and, and Lindsay for you, all the design stuff? Um, where, How can they get in touch with you and learn more about uh, LTG investments? Yeah, so I guess, yeah, I'll do it. Um, so talking about roles, right? Making sure that you're not stepping on your your partner's toes, whether it's your, your actual partner, your wife, or um, your business partner. Lindsay has full control of the LTG Investments Instagram page. Nice. It is beautiful. I'm not muddy in the waters anymore with that thing. Um, and so if you want to talk to Lindsay directly, that's where you got to go. Because that thing, it looks beautiful. It's curated. Every time she posts something, it's like she gets hit up by like 15 people like asking her where, where X, Y, or Z came from or yeah, please every time I come design my house. Once every three months, every time I post. <laughs> yeah, but they're always good. They're always really good. And then if you want to get a hold of me directly on Instagram, um, Tyler Goble at LTG Analytics um, is what you talk directly to me. But I'm on LinkedIn. Um, Lindsay is definitely not on LinkedIn, although she has a profile. Um, kind of the talking roles. I do, I do all of our inbound um, conversations and stuff like that. And so if you want to get a hold of us, um, even if you want to talk to Lindsay, probably just contact me because I check my email pretty rigorously. And <laughs> my beloved um, has been known to let a couple emails slip by every now and then. And so Lindsay, um, right here, right here, Lindsay. You know, knuckles, before this knuckles. podcast, I'm like, so where do I go? Where's the link? Let's <laughs> yeah. <in." laughs> hey, this is my podcast with Stu. And I, I had I'd asked the same question, dude. I was like, Hey man, what's the link, dude? I have no idea. Yeah. Lindsay, it's, it's a daily drinks. bottle. I, I, I feel you. I, I feel you. <laughs> I have a wonderful assistant who keeps my life on track. And even then I've like, I've missed three flights in the past couple months. Like I'm just, we got, our. (laughs) that's, that's that's worse than me. That's worse than me. Yeah. 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 But just to summarize all that, find me on LinkedIn. Um, it's just Tyler Goebel, or you can find us on Instagram at LTG investments or LTG analytics and be happy to talk through this stuff and be fun to talk to people. It's my favorite part of this whole thing. Yeah, for sure, man. We'll, we'll put uh, the links in the show notes and we'll also put uh, unboundnow.org in the show notes um, to reach out to them. Um, hey, this was awesome. I, I really appreciate you guys jumping on. Great to see you again, Tyler, Lindsay. Um, 
you're much smarter than Tyler. So, so keep, <laughs> keep him in check, please. Uh, right. uh, yeah. David, you got anything else? Um, not really smart to say. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Stu. That's a great, uh, that's a great segue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, Hey, I just want to thank you guys, Tyler, Lindsay, you guys are absolutely incredible. I, I wish that I was thinking the way you guys are when I was your age, uh, just the, the vision, the clarity, the mission, and, he, and not even clarity. Clarity is not something I think is, is necessarily, a um, you know, something to desire. It's that action, right? The actions, the continuous actions moving forward to seek that clarity and and in the meantime, making an impact. And I, I, I love it. You guys are amazing. Uh, really look forward to future collaboration with unbound and, uh, and just knowing you guys and just knowing uh, uh, your love for the Lord, your love to help others, your love to serve is, is absolutely incredible. It's very motivating. It's challenging and makes us want to be better people. So thank you guys for your time. And uh, you guys are rad. Thank you. Yeah. Love you guys. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hey guys and gals, reach out to Tyler and Lindsay, uh, check them out, check out uh, the Instagrams and the links of ends and, and uh, their website. We'll post it all there and share this episode and check out unbound now, uh, dot org and, uh, go fill a storehouse. Thanks friends. Make, it, make it a great day. Make it a great we'll day. You Thank you guys. Make there you go. Day. See you. <laughs> yeah, Bye. See ya. My dude, Tyler, Lindsay, love them. Tons of value add had me reassessing, you know, simple practical things like, Hey, what's my role? What do we, uh, how do we maximize our businesses? How do we maximize our giving? How to be clear, dude, loved it. Loved yeah, it. Man. I love how, you know, like giving 10% out of our business, like that was, that was like the baseline, right? Like that's where we start no matter what. And then from there, like finding opportunities and it's not just money, right? You know, giving time and effort, uh, all these things are, you know, just figuring out ways to serve and give uh, for a higher purpose, a, a bigger calling than just, you know, making money. Like so, so huge. And dude, my assumption, if you're listening to filling the storehouse podcast, you're a super capable, most likely really good looking individual. And you have a ton to offer a ton of practical things, whether it's hammering nails, whether it's building nerdy uh, data, you know, spreadsheets like, like, uh, Tyler, which is an amazing skill that I do not have. So nerdy is, uh, I use that with respect and love. Um, but, but different ways that we can serve other people was one of my biggest takeaways as well that, Hey, let's get out there and do something. Let's get it. Giving money is amazing. We should do that. It's incredible. Uh, but, but let's use the skills that we've been given that we've been blessed with to go bless others. And, uh, yeah, man, go fill that storehouse, go fill the storehouse. See you. Soup. Thanks for listening to Filling the Storehouse. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe and share it with someone you love. And if you really felt inspired, leave a five-star review so we could continue to grow and help other Christian entrepreneurs fill their storehouse. If you're interested in creating financial freedom through real estate investing, be sure to check out our website at storehouse310turnkey.com. We'd love to serve you through our platform of building the kingdom. Just click on the contact link and we'll reply to you as soon as we can. Again, thanks so much for listening. Now go for your storehouse and make it a great day.